Hi, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my craft room. I have a Christmas on the 25th for you today, which is my monthly Christmas inspiration to build up my holiday card stash as well as bring you inspiration all year long. I am using the Avery L stamp set called Santa Jaws and I'm coloring in with different Christmassy light colors like red, yellow, green, and blue. I'm also bringing in some gold with my present as well as the ornaments on the tree of this great white shark's back. And then I will also bring in some of my, like more of a deeper green to color in the tree. I wanted it to still kind of have a blue teal vibe since it's going to be a water-based card, um, but it still has a pine tree color look to it. So I'm very quickly going through my coloring. Um, I don't like to slow my videos down too much with coloring, but just kind of showing my very quick process here of how I am coloring in my images. Most of my images, especially the small ones, are just two-tone, a dark and a light. If I have three that I think look really nice, like for the green, I did do three different shades. Um, I will, but for the most part, these smaller images will only have two, a medium and a light. Now for the larger images, like the present, like the, the red of the present, as well as the tree and my shark, I will use three different shades because I can get a little bit more dimension since I have more space to color. Now for my shark, I am using blue grays and I am almost out of my BG, I believe it's one, blue gray one. Like I was really trying to get ink out of my marker. I'm going to have to buy a refill. Uh, so when I'm coloring in my shark, I don't want to show too much because I was coloring that shark forever, trying to get as much ink out of my blue gray one marker as I possibly could. But I did want to do more of a blue hue again like my tree the green has a bit of a teal tint to it same with my shark I wanted to have a little bit of a blue tint to it normally for animals when I color gray I use my brown grays and here I am as you can see really trying to get that ink in there in, the, in my shark uh, but since I'm doing an underwater card I wanted things to have more of a blue tint to them so there are some matching dies for the stamp set. I have them linked below. I do not own them. So I am just going to grab my little scissors as soon as I'm done coloring and adding my white accents to cut those images out. And then I'm going to set them aside to work on my background. So this is a really quick and easy interactive Christmas card. I wanted to show something that could be easily reproduced. You definitely don't need to do a full distress oxide background. You could start with a blue cardstock already and then just add some additional ink to create this water splatter background. But the nice thing about oxides is because they are water reactive, you can create a really nice, fun, bubbly underwater scene. So I'm going through with Salty Ocean and I'm only using one color. So I started off with a light coat on my watercolor paper and then I brought in some Lawn Fawn Ocean Wave stencils to add color on top of that. So I am just darkening up what is already on the paper. I'm not adding a second color, but you can totally do that as well. If you wanted more of that teal, you could bring in Mermaid Lagoon, um, or if you wanted to go darker, bring in that blueprint sketch or prize ribbon to kind of darken up the water. I use my Distress Sprayer to add in water, as you can see, and then a paper towel to pick up the excess water and ink. I have this Beach Ball Silk from Spellbinders, and I'm just adding in some blue splatter just to really make this a bubbly under the ocean scene. Once it's dry, I'm grabbing one of my Lawn Fawn inside out rectangles to die cut that out. And now I can start figuring out where I'm going to put my sentiment. So my little strand of lights are gonna go under my sentiment and my shark holding the tree and present will be on top of the sentiment. I decided to go with the I'm Dreaming of a Great White Christmas. I like that it was a little wider and it would fit nicely on top of the light strand. I am figuring out the placement to make sure it's as centered as possible and then I'm grabbing my anti-static powder to make sure that I can emboss the sentiment without having any issues of having a wet 
background from the distress oxide and all of that water. So I use my anti-static tool to make sure that when I stamp that in Versamark, which is a sticky pigment ink, it won't stick around the sentiment where I don't want the embossing powder to go, which you can actually see right here towards the bottom. There, um, there definitely is some powder getting stuck. So I'm just using a brush to brush that out of the way, which it was really easy since I used that anti-static powder around where my sentiment was gonna be stamped. While I was cleaning up my mess, I warmed up my heat embossing gun and then used that to melt that embossing powder down. And now my background is ready to go onto a card base. This is a top folding A2 size card base using some super sturdy 110 cover card stock from Nina in Solar White. And I'm just using my tape runner, my big ATG gun to put some adhesive on the back of that since it was warped and from, you know, the ink, the water, the embossing, and that way it would be really secure on no wrinkles on my card base. I'm using my wet glue to glue down the light strands under my sentiment doing my best to center those. And then I'm going to glue the gift onto my little shark's I was gonna say hand, but it's not a hand, his fin. So he's holding his little present and bringing home the Christmas tree. And then I'm gonna grab one of these mini action wobblers. I did link Art Impressions down below because that I believe is the brand I'm using. I tossed my packaging and just put them into a Ziploc bag since I don't use them all the time. So I did link down the brand I use below, but you can also find them. Um, Simon Says Stamp sells their own action wobbler, but I have linked down below Art Impressions. I peeled off the release paper from one side of the action wobble and I'm placing it to the center of the shark because that's where I want the shark to wobble the least, if that makes sense. So it's not going to wobble as much in the center where the edges like the present and the tree will look much more wobbly right here. You can see how they're, everything's really moving around like the fin, the um, its tail fin, its present and tree. Then I peeled off the release paper on the other side and stuck it down to the card base. And now I'm just adding some blue jewels for my stash. I linked something similar down below just to add some sparkle and shine because you know I can't do a card without something shiny on it. Here's a final look at that shark wobbler card. I hope that you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.